raise your hand if you think that I'm quite handy around the house. And I'm really, really enjoying it. But you didn't say what the yarn was. I don't know what it is, Kate. We was at that as well. You was at that. We... I, how, how can you knit flat on a 16 inch circular? I said to him, how did you do that? Well I did. Uh, Are you telling me that that walnut whip has been made in a nut sterile environment? Oh, no, it won't. It won't have done. No, no. And we'll take a look inside. I'm scared. Oh, it is. The pasta's in there. When I say, I'm not really sure what she's going on about. Right, well, it doesn't matter. In the... <laughs> It's very banana-y. You'll hate it. Oh! <laughs> it's really banana -y. I think Dan's lost the tag. It, this had a tag. I when haven't I, lost the tag. Yes, I he has. It up and no, the tag no, wasn't up there. No. I swear to when you. When I give, gave you this. episode 92. Wow! Goodness gracious me! We're nearly at 100 and I worked out the other day when episode 100 would be. Let's see if she got it right shall we folks? It's the week, week before my birthday. Congratulations you win the star prize you are correct. Well I know because I worked it forward how could I be wrong? Well I don't know. The week before my Just birthday. Just bask in so the glory. It's in May. That's lovely isn't it? A lovely time. I like May, not just because it's my birthday, I just like it as a month. It is in May, and yeah. the, it, plans are already beginning to mm -hmm. be afoot. Mm -hmm. Yes, but obviously that is to come later on in the year. Yeah. Can, I, can I move a little bit closer in there? Can, can we, she was getting yes, bothered because she wanted you to <laughs> all see, that, see knitting, what we've written. that knitting is the new black. Of course it is, Which we all course, know we that, know. don't we? Now you've seen that, we can now yeah, move in just, just slightly. It, Go on in, move like, in just slightly. Because then, exactly. then it's it nice just felt weird. I, was, if, I felt Nothing. like I was miles away from him, which obviously I wasn't. But I think we should have a little, a little, just a quick test. We should have a little show of hands from viewers. Yeah. I think this could be quite interesting. Raise your hand, and you could post a picture of you raising your hand on Instagram if you like. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think that I'm quite handy around the house. <laughs> Now, who, who raised their hand? Neil, Kay, would you like to tell everyone, am I quite handy around the house? Be you honest. Are, you are when you do it. Oh, you're being mean now. No, I'm not being mean. When you get round to doing things, you're Isn't very that, handy and you can do it. Isn't that all men's But problem? stuff kind of lingers, doesn't it's it? Like, it's like um, Nana Wendy and, and Grandpa Steve. G Grandpa Steve desperately doesn't want to do anything different ever no but then when he does yeah he does it he properly style. goes for it and but then, he puts it off for years years which i suppose i didn't put it's it off really, for years no. i just didn't think i could do it no but no. yes in the last two weeks my handiness has shown itself and it all stems from uh, when i was growing up my mum hired this joiner plumber guy to come around and fix some windows and his assistant was supposed to come along and help him and he wasn't right. there so he said oh, oh would I help right. and I said yes and at the end of the day he said you were brilliant do you want to come and work for me so I went yeah okay I didn't know any of this yeah yeah I worked for a joiner why haven't I got you doing more things if this <laughs> is the case I worked for a joiner and a plumber for a year when I was about how, how did 15. I not know that it was it's obviously just a weekend job he would pick me up, and I remember, I remember what I did, worryingly, with my first pay, it wasn't a check, he just gave me cash. He said, you know, he was gonna go drop me at home, and I said, no, 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 drop me in York. So he dropped me in town, and I went straight, I think it was HMV. I went to HMV, and I bought, I, I bought two cassettes. I'm not, cassettes. I can't remember. Yeah, that's all I, 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 I wasn't a record person. My brothers were. No, I had a few records, but I had cassettes. I, I remember my brothers having records, but for me, it was cassettes. cassettes. Yeah. yeah. And I went to HMV, and what, I think I might still have it. It, it was Fine Young Cannibals. Oh, gosh. I really liked. Fine Young Cannibals? I quite like it. She drives me crazy. Yeah. But you know, Fine Young Cannibals, they're okay. But yes, I fixed. 
A problem we've had with our sink for ages. Don't. This problem, honestly, we bought this house from new and that was 10 years ago and the plumbing was not very good. No. We had, when we first moved in, brand new house, we had a leak in the shower on the top floor that they had to come and sort out. But the plumbing under the sink in the kitchen was, was just an um, it was just a mess. But and they did come back and supposedly try and fix something, but it never was right. No, and basically that we've got two sinks and one sink. It was just leaking underneath. Yeah, so we've but never used it. It's like one of those little mini sinks. Not you know you know you know what I mean. But then our main sink, it's got one of those fancy fairly new plug things in which has got like a couple of um a, a couple of settings you know you can lift it out to drain you can push it in it's yeah. got like a, a seal to stop stuff going down well it stopped working and we went and bought a new plug mm. but the new plug wouldn't stay in no. so what happened was you why was i under the sink in the first place because you'd seen a leak yeah it so was, it wasn't even something there was wet. It's, there's always a problem under the sink i'm like oh it's wet again under the sink so oh. so i headed off under the sink <laughs> to to fix it and because it's a leak i obviously had to spend some time filling sinks letting it drain and all that and because i was going to be stood there a little bit i started to do other little jobs yeah. that had been going around so fix the plug fix the sink and then fix the leak but then, even beyond that, went and fixed the the, uh, yeah, the, the some, skirting board. There was some beading on the... He wood, was on a roll, baby. Along the edge of the wooden floor in the hall where a tiny bit of the beading had come come away. And I told you a couple of weeks ago. I think the... Um, so you fix that. The issue is... I'm going to make you a list. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, you know, fly the flag now and defend all my fellow brothers out there. The issue is, I think... Because it takes quite a bit of time to get, you know, set to fix a particular problem, mm. that's why we have a tendency to put it off because we know it's going to take a while to get ready to fix that problem. But actually, when you go ahead and fix that problem and there's four or five other problems to fix at the same time, then you can be productive and you can right. fix a whole load of things in a so couple of hours. that's the theory. That's why it? I left that sink problem for two years. Right. <laughs> but the weather... It literally, we've gone from... Oh, it's been rubbish. Insane <laughs> snow with massive flakes, as I showed on the Patreon podcast on Sunday. I managed to catch one and show it to everyone live. To now today, it's There's 9, no... 10 degrees outside. And it's extremely wet because we had more snow than I've seen probably in five years. Yeah. It's all gone now. Yeah, because it but all it's... melted. The river in the, the park. Yes. I mean, it was... Very high. ...burst in its banks yesterday. And I bet it, it must be over today with the extra rain. I didn't go around there this Did morning when not? I was running. No. Oh, right. I must admit... You should have gone to have a look. Well, I should. I really we'll should. We'll have a look later. What happened was this morning, I woke up... Well, I didn't because... Well, I did. Of course I did. <laughs> because I didn't sleep very well because of the silly wind. When I woke up... The, the rain was lashing yeah, against the window and the wind was blowing and I'm thinking... And it was on our side of the house. It actually wasn't too bad at the back. Right. I just remember, I remember laying there thinking, I cannot believe I'm going running in this. And you the, went, the, didn't the, you? the rain was just going crazy and the wind was like nuts. Absolutely bonkers. And, and by the time, you know, you, you, you get yourself up and you get outside, and I say this to you all the time, I actually had a really good run. But because it was rainy and windy, I went in the woods. Because oh, then at right. least you get some cover. Well, so I, I didn't know, but you could get a tree trunk on your head, couldn't you, doing well, that? Well, you just keep your ears and your eyes open and Well, you run. have your headphones in. That's true. <laughs> He's an idiot. Speaking of moving forward with two feet, whether it be running or walking, I, I covered the whole gamut yeah. of, of things there. Of course... Our Climb Every Mountain Cal is underway. Yes. We had our first height check yes. on And Sunday. do you know what? We had about 20 more finished ob objects really quickly after I gave that total. So we must be... We were at... Um, no, the, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, I will oh, tell right. you now. Okay. But first of all, just so you know, the runners and the walkers, and remember, running and walking team, open to anybody. You want to get involved? Let me know. I'll invite you to one of the groups and we're away. Running and walking team, we are Team Cool, as named after Kenton Cool, British climber who's climbed Everest a number of times. Yeah. The, the knitting team is... Team Fines. Excellent. Randall Fines, Randall of course. Randall Fines. And, and Team Cool is at 1,050 feet. And Team Fines was at um, 801 feet. Well, okay, if you're going to work like that. But it's more than that. We was at that as well. You was at that. We was at... Did you like that? <laughs> we was at 1,050 feet. We was at... Feet. <laughs> so, we, as of Sunday, just gone, that's what? 
we yes. were at, but yeah. it's more than that now. Well, we, we figured actually the because are of the way. Be piling ahead oh, of the runners. Stop it. Well, we, we figured that looking at how things had gone last year with the the fog along. Normally, it, it, lots of people pile stuff in at the end of, the, of each month. Understandably, that's how I would have done it. So we sort of guessed that we're probably about even, which yeah, is brilliant. Probably about even. Which so, is really yeah. cool. And we actually started at base camp, Everest well, look, base camp. Take a look. Here oh, it is. Yeah. We've got a little graphic. So we are at base camps at 17,000 feet. Yes. So we're probably both at around 18,000 feet at the minute. Yes. Gosh, that's high, isn't it, already? It is. It is. So please come join in. Patrons, obviously, uh, it is your Nissa Long, so you can join the Nissa team, everyone else. But if you're not a patron, don't worry, because you can come and join us for the Never Gonna Knit You Up Cal. We'll be talking more about that later on, but that's obviously yeah. ongoing right now. Yep. Yeah. Lots of action this past two weeks. I'm quite stunned at the amount of action, to, to be perfectly honest. The amount of action? Honest, the, the amount of knitting action. Well, that we've done already. I have three... Brand new cast-ons. You do, absolutely. I have three new, oh, I don't know, some new cast-ons. <laughs> not only that, I don't think I was very far, th I hadn't knit, I don't think I'd knit the heel. I hadn't. No, on that. On that sock. Mm. I finished a pair of socks. Yeah. So I was on, I was on the ankle. You've done really, that second sock was really quick. Something it? odd's been going on. Maybe you just on a finishing thing. I've been I possessed. To get like that, and I just want to finish loads of things. And there has been action around my knitting horizons. Oh yes. And mine too. Oh yes. Loads. Look at that. Yes. We are. It's not like last year no. where I failed at no. the first hurdle. But this episode, we have so much in store for you. It's a very, very exciting episode because it's our final proposals for the Baker Bears bucket list. And the next episode, that's where we make a stand for the one that we want and then between us next episode we'll make a decision so you'll find out next episode what we will be doing this year but not only that we have possibly the most exciting but also nerve-wracking down the world food aisle oh gosh that we have I totally ever forgot done. about that i'm i am I equally forgot about that. i am equally interested as i am terrified and I'm hoping, what I'm hoping, when I was thinking about it earlier, uh -huh. I was thinking, I really hope I'm hungry when we do it, because that will make me more open yeah. to the journey which well, we're going on. It's got, it's got to be edible, hasn't it, considering what it is and what it's used Considering for. that an army marches on its stomach, and we shall say nothing more. Yes, indeed. That's all to come later on in the show. The, the, the first knitability of 2018 came out in between... We have been busy these last two weeks. Have been busy. The first disability of 2018 really came out last week. And one of the things that I spoke about in that was emotions when knitting. And oh, I, you did. You did. I've really been sort of thinking about that a lot and thinking about mm. how different projects make me feel. And I tell you what I've also been thinking about. I wasn't feeling particularly positive about my project bags towards <laughs> the end of last year. But when I say that, what I mean is, I mean, I'm not very positive about the projects that are within the bags. Oh, right. Okay. I don't mean I I'm unhappy with my bags. Bag. Well, that's what it sounded like. I have the most excellent collection of project you bags. You do, and you you've got a new one. I do, which I'll show you later. Mm. But I, I really do. I mean, they're all superb. It's the projects that are within them. Right, okay. And I'm, That was not clear. I'm sorry. Well, I have, I have now made it clear. And I'm feeling so... I'm just feeling different about things. Right. I feel really positive. I really feel like things are moving forward and moving in the right direction. It's really interesting, I think, the emotions that are attached to art forms. And mm. I think it's all art forms. It's very, it's, it's very emotional, isn't it? I, I think, think. I think with, with paintings, you it can't is. not be emotional, can you, about something like that? With art forms? Yeah. Any yeah, art form? Yeah. And isn't that interesting? Because I haven't stopped and really thought about that before with regards to knitting. You just, you, mm. you get on with a project and you finish it and you, you, you're done. Well, actually, I think there's a whole lot more going on. Mm. And I think that there needs to be, and I think this applies to you in a big way, there needs to be more consideration given to the vibe that you're mm. getting off your projects mm. and if you're getting a negative vibe off your projects I don't think that's anything to be ashamed of or to worry about no no but make a change absolutely and mm. I'm very emotional about what I knit because 
you know, like all of us, your knitting time, I think, is precious, isn't it? And yes. you want to spend that time knitting things that mean something to you. I certainly do anyway. Yes. So if I'm just knitting something that's kind of, you know, washing over me, not really fussed, then, I mean, more often than not, I will finish it. Yeah, I mean, more of, I will I will strive to finish it, but it'll be a struggle. Whereas if I'm knitting something I really love, then you want to do it, don't you? Yes. So find, I think it's a very emotional thing. Find the projects, and you might be surprised as to what those projects are. Yeah. But find the projects think, which give you the most joy and knit them. I think you sometimes feel, and certainly in the world that we live in now, where we watch lots of podcasts and you know social media and everything like that, you sometimes feel that you should be knitting that particular thing that's really, really popular because everyone else is knitting it. And I never do that. If I like it, then yes, obviously I will, you know, I will knit it. But I will never knit something just because everyone else is knitting it or it's very popular or whatever. Because then, you know, you, you, you're, not knit, you're not knitting it for the right reason, I don't think. You're not no. knitting it because you truly want that thing. You it's, like, it's like wearing something because everyone else yeah, is wearing it. Yeah. You might look an idiot in it. Yeah. Don't do that. No. Wear what makes you look good. You need you to go good. with your own style, and I think knit that's... Yeah. what makes you feel good. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think I'm desperate to, to start showing some, showing some projects. Yes. Dan Jones. Yes. What's on your needles? Oh! It's a hat. Yes. And it's bringing me great joy. It's lovely on and I forgot to look it up, but I think I know what it is. It's bringing me great joy because the yarn is wonderful. It's lovely. I think Dan's lost the tag. It this had a tag I when I lost the tag. Yes, I he picked has. It up and no, the tag no, wasn't up there. No. I swear to when you. When I give gave you this yarn, it I had a tag you. on. Right. When well, I, I haven't touched it. When I gave you, because this yarn was a gift, and when I gave it to you, it had a tag on. And I think it's Knit Picks. It's something like City Tweed Aran or something, or Worsted, something along those lines. Let's, it is truly lovely. It feels soft and it's very soft. gorgeous. It, it looks absolutely lovely. It and is lovely. It, it's the type of yarn that you would look at and you'd think... Oh, a lady would have to wear this. No. But no. I don't think so. It's so tweedy. It's the first time it's I've knit lovely. a hat in a long time, and it is. It and is. Love, I've not knit a hat. I love hat. the little balls that they come in as well. I don't it's... think I've knit a hat in a year. Probably not. No, it's been a long while. It's so soft. It's non-super wash, I'm pretty sure. And I, I definitely needed a break from hats because I've knit an awful soft. lot. soft. Coming back is just... It's like a breath of fresh air. Mm. And the, there is only one type of ribbing that I could do on this hat. And you all know what that is. Yes, say it with me. It's twisted rib. Doing twisted rib again mm. is just wonderful. And I did twist it. The pattern actually isn't twisted rib. It's two by two normal rib. Mm. But I looked at the pattern and it, it doesn't, you know, it's not like some patterns which you do like Declan's where it flows mm. in. It's the first time I've started knitting anything in a long time where I thought, you know what, I might keep this for myself. We well, could totally wear that. Yeah. Mm. I really do think that this would be a perfect autumnal. 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 Spring autumnal hat. Mm. Definitely. I think. But this, actually, it's the Journeyman hat. And this is designed, it's the first time, I'm, I'm ashamed to say, it's the first time I've ever knit a hat designed by Benjamin Crudwig. Lovely well, Benjamin. I've knit anything designed by Benjamin Crudwig. We, we invited him to be part of uh, Knitability in the, the Meet the Designer section, and he offered to do a hat. Well, he offered to design something for the magazine, and this is what he designed. Now, you can actually buy this. Yes. You can buy this hat on Ravelry, but it is free in the current issue of Knitability. Yeah. It's got like a series of textured triangles. This is black and white, so it's not showing it properly. But you can kind of see it's got these um, and what he's, triangles on it. What he's done is he's created a design which is inspired by our adventures. And when I look at the hat design, what I see is a couple of roads mm. and houses going going past. Or, or maybe it's ruins, maybe it's, you know, who knows what it might yeah, be passing yeah. by. But I, I just, I looked at it and I just thought, do you know what? 
I like that. Mm. I'm going to knit it. You got there, you cast on. Yeah, twice. Twice. I cast on first time. What happened? Well, I knit flat. I, how, how can you knit flat on a 16 inch circular? I said to him, how did you do that? Well, I did. You must have turned your work or something. I knit, Even then, I knit I back in the wrong direction. Now you'll find out know. why I knit flat because I have another new cast on where I am knitting flat. To start off with, yeah. yes. And I think what happened was because my head was in knit flat mode. Uh, Even though I don't know how you did it on a 16 inch. Well, I don't know how I did it either, but all I know is when I got to the end of the row, I hadn't fun. joined it in the round. <laughs> I had a flat piece of knitting and doing twisted rib again is a true joy. It is one of the true wonders. What are the seven wonders of knitting, I wonder? I wonder, seven wonders of knitting. That should be a thing. We're doing it. That should be a thing. We're doing it. The seven wonders of knitting. Yes. And I'm making the first proposal. Twisted rib. Yes. Right. Do you disagree? Um, Please do disagree if you do. Uh, no, mm, I don't know that I would call it a wonder. Why? Because on on the top of a sock, I don't I don't know. I don't know if I just prefer a normal rib. I'm not sure. I'd have to give it some thought. Okay, what we're going to do? I gonna do, do love a twisted rib. This is brilliant. I do love a twisted this rib. This is brilliant. This is evolution. You're watching it happen live. <laughs> what we will do is over the next few episodes, we will propose. A wonder of the knitting world. We will propose mm. um, um, wonders of the knitting world. Because the bucket list is coming to an end anyway. So, you know, next episode. So what we'll do is over the next few episodes, you know, in the course of what's on or what's off your needles, we'll propose what we think is a wonder of the, the seven wonders right. of the knitting world. And then we'll have a list probably of 10 or 12 things. And then in an episode, we'll do a section on you see, seven I wonders of the knitting world and we'll like, nail it down. I would think about things more that kind of transformed how you knit. Things like magic loop technique. I would say that is a wonder of the well, knitting world. Well, you can propose that. Okay, right. But I'm saying that ribbing is a chore and boring. Well, that is true, isn't it, really? Twisted rib Although... makes it a joy and interesting. Right, okay. We will discuss this further okay. in a later episode. Okay. But that is my first brand new cast on. And you're using chow goos, aren't you? Yes, and I've... do you know what? They're what great. Do you think? I'm not keen on, I mean, I love chow goos in general, but I'm not keen on the 16 inch circular chow goos. I have knit with it. Just something about the stiffness of it all. Well, I was worried, um, right? I'll be honest, I was worried about this. I thought, because I was marrying this up with, when I tried the metal needles mm, with, with the garment mm. knitting, and I was thinking, this is going to be a problem because they're going to be the too pointy, sharp and yeah, there's going to be issues. Yeah. Well, actually, I think when I'm knitting hats, I always need to be on metal right. because of my gauge and because of how I knit. Because this is an absolute joy oh, and it's right. great. Well, that's brilliant. And I love it. I didn't waste my money buying those. You did not. <laughs> these these are most definitely my go-to hat knitting needles. It's brilliant. just it's perfect. Yeah. If I use metal needles with garments, it's awful. Yeah, because it it digs your it, fingers. It's just awful. I get a callus on my finger, mm. and it's just not pleasant. And I was thinking about this the other day, and, and sort of watching myself knit, which sounds weird, but I don't really. I d sometimes I'll push with my finger, but I certainly don't with every stitch. And I know that you kind of do. Don't I always you? do. Something I meant to say was what drew me to this hat was the pattern looked readable, and I don't mean it looked readable. I mean it looks like a pattern where. I'm going to be able to pick up my knitting and know yeah. where I am. Yeah. And the last time I knit a pattern that was quite so readable was actually the mouchoir socks, which we didn't really like the finished d d design of the mouchoir, but I actually enjoyed knitting the mouchoir because it was so readable. You could just pick it up, see where you were, and go, which I really like. And I think that's it's very what... clear, very clear, yeah, simple pattern. Beautifully written, beautifully written. But, yeah. but the actual design, for me, the designs which I love the most are the ones which flow and just sort of sing. Mm, mm. And I, I don't know yet, because I'm not into the pattern. I think you'll be good with I that. I think this pattern's going to sing to me. And I think it'll be really nice in the tweed. Yeah, I do. I think it's going to look mm, great. I'm really yeah. excited about this. And, you know, for me to be saying I might keep it, that's unheard of. Kay Jones, what's on your needle? Yay! Well, as part of my Mitmus quest and my Knitting Horizons, Always. that I spoke about last time, just... 
Everything is I'm knitting together. a pair of mittens and I said that I wanted to design a pair of, of fingerless mitts that I could use to knit a few pairs for my Mitt Miss quest and that's exactly what I've done. So I designed this little pair of mitts and I've knit one and I'm halfway done with the other one. So I'll pop it on. Here's the first one. Oh, you can, oh, you can see if I hold it at an angle, you can see the pattern that's on there. It's really pretty. It kind of looks like little flowers running down the hand. It's just plain on the other side. Isn't this yarn lovely? I'll tell you about the yarn in a second. So, I've, and I've knit it quite long. This pair actually won't be a gift because the yarn I've used is quite a special yarn and Bryony, when I told her what the yarn was, she said, oh, I really want those. So these ones, like, I'm never gonna get these mitts done, am I? Because I'll be get too sentimental. This is my problem, I get too sentimental. And I, um, I'll take that one off and then show you. So that was the left hand and this is the right hand of where I'm up to. Does anyone remember, can I just ask, does anyone remember Spike Jones and his City Slickers? No. Because when you said, I'm getting sentimental, I remember that he does a song called, I'm getting sentimental over you. Oh, I know that song, yeah. Well, he I does don't a, like him, do I? I've got a feeling that I He does a like version him. of that song, which is hilarious. Just wondered if anyone remembered him. Uh, this is where I'm up to on the second one, and you can see the texture there, the sort of pattern. It's basically based on a rib. What I wanted to do was to design something that would be really nice and stretchy and would accommodate a lot of hand sizes because you never know when you're giving gifts to people. I mean, you know obviously what they look like, but thinking about how big their hands are is quite a difficult thing. So I thought if I can come up with a pattern that's nice and stretchy, then it will accommodate you know, people with a larger hand as well. So I'm on, I'm just at where I'm about to start the thumb gusset for the right hand mitt. I'm using Magic Loop and these are higher hires. It's an interchangeable, I couldn't remember. I'm using 3.75 millimeter interchangeables and it's the ones that swivel, which is nice actually. It's good for Magic Loop because it helps with the twisting that can kind of occur. They are very pointy, very, very pointy higher hires. I don't know how well. I'll put it against Dan's top. I did that before with this one. Yeah, you can see how pointy they are. And they're very slippy. They wouldn't be my first choice, but I didn't have a 3.75 fixed circular. And I wanted to use Magic Loop. That's just my preference right now. DPN seemed to cause me a problem, but yeah. So, and it's worsted weight. I wanted to use worsted weight. You can actually, it would work with D, from sort of DK up to a sort of heavier worsted, I'm pretty sure it would work. And I've got a variety of yarns sort of picked out, but it makes the, the, the knitting of it quite quick, I think, because it's just a little six row repeat. You can work a number of repeats up to the thumb, pop in the thumb gusset, and then another number of repeat, repeats up to the top. So it, I think it helps with the motivation of keeping going when you've got something to do kind of on one side of it. The yarn, it's super lovely. It's the Uncommon Thread, Lush Worsted, and the colourway is Peat. And this was left over when I knit. Pippi, can you see, can you spot Pippi? He's behind us. He's kind of in disguise because you can barely see Pippi. Here's Pippi. Do you remember Pippi? She's still got on her Christmas jumper. <laughs> but here's Pippi. Do you remember her? Oh, hello. Look how sweet she is. Oh, she's so cute. Like she's got a little pippy dog tag on. And I knit this for Bryony's birthday. She must have been about eight, I think. It's probably three or four years ago that I knit pippy. And she's a bit pilly and, but look, she's, look how cute. She's fine, isn't she? And this is the yarn, this was left over. So because this was left over from pippy, I've called these pippy mitts. These are my pippy mitts. It's a brilliant use of a leftover. I had nearly a full ball left over. So I thought, well, that's great. I'll use that. So these ones will stay here. These won't be a gift. But it's just a lovely little quick, very quick little pattern. Yeah, so, and I might put this out as a pattern. I'd have to work up some extra sizes at some point. But it, you know, it, it might come out as a pattern. But for now? But for now, it's just my pippy mitts for my Mitmus quest. Cool! Yes! And look at this! I've made loads of progress on this. I'm on the... 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 the shaping. 
Oh, I wonder what you were going to say. I thought you were going to say I'm on the arms or something. No, I was going to say... I was going to be amazed. I was going to say the gusset shaping. The gusset shaping. That sounds shaping. all wrong. It does. And do you know, not, I haven't got a project bag for these mitts. Unbelievable. Disgraceful. It's the first time ever that I've started doing waist shaping. And so I did my first round. What I've done is I've been quite clever because I've done the, the first round of... You've got to do it every... I think it's every 12... That'll be every 12 rounds. Every 12 rounds. So it's just a gentle... It is. Every 12 rounds, and you do it three times. Oh, right, okay. And I've done it on the first round of the repeat. Right. Which makes it yeah. easy to remember. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's I am blue. absolutely loving it. You are loving it. Like, yeah. full-on loving it. And I wrote at length in this ability about the feelings that I've been getting with regards to knitting garments. And this is the reason why in the last episode I spoke about feeling like I am perhaps a garment knitter. I've never knit anything before which has felt so right. I've never knit anything before, and I include double knitting in this, which I've enjoyed knitting so much. I'm definitely a garment knitter. Mm. Because and someone commented saying, oh, you know, you can't label yourself. That's what yourself I've just said. That's what I've just said. one thing or another, but I kind of think you can. Well, you, you can label yourself when you know that the feeling that you've yeah. got when, and I've never had a feeling quite like it when I finished the Irish coffee. Yeah. And that's flowed on into this. And you know, that has led to the, the, the progress on this, mm. which is massive. Really. I mean, it's massive. I think if you, if it was your choice, you would just probably knit on this and nothing else, wouldn't you? Do you think? Uh, I don't know about that. I would have agreed with you when all I had on the go was socks. Yeah. But now because I'm making because we set out on Knitting Horizons last episode, that then creates a thought process so as lovely. to how you make those horizons come to fruition. And so I've cast on other things which are going to take my you know, skills in a way where I can be casting on the, the colour work jumpers, which is what I really, really want to do. So yeah, that is the Samantha jumper. It's by Amy Miller, who, I mean, I think, I've, actually I'm nearly through another ball there. And I need to learn. Really? Kay showed me once how to do wet splicing. And you, you must actually do a tutorial on I this. I must do. I haven't done one, have I? So I will do one the next time we... Well, you're quite soon going to need yeah. a new ball there, aren't we? So, so you yeah. can use this. I'll do one. Yeah. Perfect. And then what that will mean is that I don't need to rely on you. <laughs> to so you can just what? You see me do it, though. You have seen yeah, me I do, do it. Yeah, I do. I do. But I think because... You know when you watch someone do something, you watch them do it once, yeah. and then it's gone. And I think there's a certain amount of... It, mentally, I think you're more open when you're in control of the information going oh, in. Oh, right. So you could watch the tutorial yourself and just pause it. And, yeah. yeah, and I could rewind it and yeah. rewatch bits, mm -hmm. which I don't quite get right. But also, as well, I think the problem is with you, because you're so good at things like this. It's like, you know, closing... I'm, I must admit, I've got more confident with closing gaps and weaving in ends but mm. that's only through your your teaching but you know when k is so good at things like that you just sort of think well maybe she should just do it. <laughs> which is really bad and i don't i don't do that very often i do like to just do it no 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 just i don't do mean it, it like that me. i don't mean it like that what else oh yeah oh, lovely. well i love this I am working my way through Dan's vest still. I'm loving it. I'm going to love it though. <laughs> no, actually, it's all right. It's all right because now with the pattern, I only need to look at the pattern when I come to the centre cable section just to know which bit I'm on. The rest of it I can do without actually looking at the pattern. So that has made it quicker. So that's Gosh, been that's brilliant. Good. Yeah, I'd, so I'd, that's the only time I need to look now. And again, I'm working two pieces together, which for me, it fights against what I actually want to do because I never knit socks. I have in the past tried knitting socks where you split the ball, okay. you know, into two 50 gram balls and you knit them together. So cuff on that, cuff on that, leg on that, leg on that. And I have done that. And yet, you know, you do have two socks finished at the end, but you end up with two leftover balls, which kind of, 
annoys me a little bit because it's, you know you might have to join them if you want to use them together but also I kind of just want to finish the thing I'm knitting and then I don't generally get second sock syndrome usually my second sock is quicker than the first because I'm like right I want to finish the pair now and I'll knit it quicker than the first so I don't usually have a problem with that so with this it, I've got that same kind of feeling I just want to finish that first piece and then do the second piece but I know that this is going to work better because this is such a big thing so I've knit through another repeat on each piece it's a new syndrome it's first half of vest syndrome I know so I've got the same amount on both pieces now so I've got two repeats you can see it's love it is lovely to look at and there's my other piece just as proof oh, no. you know I'm not messing oh you're ahead of me aren't you am I ahead oh no. Miles! Miles ahead! <laughs> but, like I said, I am knitting this quicker now because I don't need to be constantly checking the pattern. I know it's kind of in that my head That says something now. about the pattern, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, and although there's a lot going on and I can't... I do have to concentrate all the time. Although I know what I'm doing, I can't get distracted by anything else. I've got to pay attention because even on the, it's not even a pearl back row because you're doing stuff, you know, because you've got double moss stitch. What do you have to do in that section? The twists. Yeah. You do a twist front and a twist back and then... One stitch or two? Two, it's two stitches. So you've got four stitches here. Right. You do, on one row you do a twist front and then twist back and then on your reverse row you just purl those four stitches and then the next row you alternate it so you do twist back twist front but the way that you twist them it's not how I I've done it before and I do find this is the trickiest bit for me it's not tricky it's just a bit fiddly the twist front you knit through the second stitch on your needle and then you knit the first stitch and then take them both off oh. and then the back the twist back you knit through the back stitch of the second stitch on your needle and then through the back of the first stitch on your needle and then take them off. You can remember all that without looking at the pattern. Yeah. Because they sit differently on the needle, so I'll know when I get to that point, I'll know if it's a front or a back because they sit a little bit differently and I've learned to recognise how they sit. But I do find that working those, I, I've got to really watch what I'm doing because I split the yarn quite easily and that's, it's that not the... particularly splitty this yarn, is it? And it's, you know, I'm using wooden needles, so although they're fairly pointy, they're not the pointiest, and I'm not having a problem anywhere else splitting the stitches. I think it's just the mechanics of working those twisted stitches. Right. Because I've done twisted stitches in projects before, but I just haven't worked them quite like that. You know, this is an old pattern, and this must have been, obviously, how they worked those twisted stitches. But I'm not finding the cables an issue at all. They're all uh, just one by one cables. Sometimes you purl the back stitch, sometimes you knit it. You just have to watch out for that. Just where it sort of crosses over here, there's a bit of difference. But other than that, it's just double moss stitch. So you just have to, what again, you know, you can recognise just by looking at your previous stitches what you've got to do next. And then you also just have to take care because you always purl stitches either side of the twist. So that's another thing you just have to watch out for as well. But it's in my head now, which is making it quicker. And, you know, I've done a fair bit. And I think looking at, I measured Dan's torso. torso. And I think, because I, I just wanted to see how long he wanted it. And I knew it would be longer because he's got a really long body. So I think I've got two more repeats to work. And that'll get me to the armholes. I think. But I'm going to measure it again when I've done another repeat and just see how I'm doing. And what then, happens at the armholes? Well, one one piece, you just start to work them differently because then one piece will become the front and one will become the back. And obviously the front has got a V-neck and the back it hasn't, it's rounded at the top. So, you know, they'll be shaping for the armholes, which will probably be the same, I'm suspecting, front and back. But then it's at this point here, isn't it? where things are, are different front and back. So what I'm gonna do when I've reached the armholes on each piece, I will then just go ahead and finish the front and then go and finish the back. And it'll be done. I am gonna block the pieces before I sew them together because I think that'll just help 
get exactly the right, you know, to match up and get exactly the right shapes and everything. I think it'll make the sewing together a bit one easier. By one. Yeah, that's one by one, yeah? It's one by one. It's immense. You see, and this is all one by one. You know, double moss stitch is all one by one because it's two rows of knit one, pearl one, two rows of pearl one, knit one. So it's all one by one and it and absolutely doesn't done, bother me. I wish I'd done one by one at the bottom of yours. Why? I think one by one in this yarn It looks, looks lovely. It does look lovely. I love one by one in a thicker yarn. I mean, it doesn't it look really nice? Holding that the other way just because it's easier. But it does look lovely. It's so textured and I love how this yarn shows up all the texture really well you know and i put up a picture on instagram and a few people said oh i love the look of double moss stitch but i absolutely hate knitting it and i would never knit it and i probably would have said that i think if you'd have said to me but actually i quite enjoy it i don't and i suppose it's when you are i'm a english style knitter so you're constantly doing this aren't you moving your yarn backwards and forwards but i find it quite rhythmic when it's one by one I don't find it quite like that with two by two because, you know, there's that little bit more of a gap in between doing that. One thing that I'm, I've been thinking about is I've never seemed, because this is what double mustache, I've never done, you know, a mattress seam effectively on this type of a fabric. Not got a clue how I'm going to do that. I've really got to think about it. And what I will probably do to make sure that it all lines up is when I come to seam it, I'll put the two pieces obviously side by side like this and then I think I'll pin it so that you know as I get to each pin I'll know that the two pieces of fabric have got to be in line at that point just to keep it all in line because I think it's going to be much more tricky than just doing it on like stocking stitch where it's easy to see what you're doing. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge but I'll you know I'll, I'll do it. It's Drops Alaska. <laughs> Just the most amazing value. It's lovely. I, hope, top, I, I do really hope at least yarn. one or two people went out and bought some of this yarn after we spoke about it last time because it is cheap as chips. And it's super. It's really lovely. And this is light olive and Dan's is something like pink grey or something like that. But, it, you know, even if you only buy a couple of balls to knit a hat or a pair of mitts or something, just give it a go. Every yarn shop it's in the really, world should stock this It's stuff. really rewarding for the fact that it's so economical, I think, and it's such a nice yarn. You know, you wouldn't marry those two up automatically, I don't think. So definitely recommend it. That's an example to all the yarn shops which we can walk into on our high street that stock yeah. awful Yeah, absolutely. man-made fibres. Why don't they stock, stock drops yarn? Because stock, stock your man-made fibres as well. Yeah. You know, if, if people want to knit baby blankets yeah, in that, that yeah. that's great. But have this too yeah because they've got such a huge range of yarn haven't they drops and it's kind of that workhorsey yarn you know things like the drops fable for socks is really good and really really economical so i you know i would if you're a yarn shop owner and you're watching in this country then please stock it because it's brilliant. i need a bigger bag and everyone it's needs like it. jaws goodness me you I'm really do need, need a, a bigger, bigger bag. bag do you have a bigger bag oh yes thank goodness <laughs> I don't recall seeing a bigger bag in a long time. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what bag you pull out. Uh, I have another brand new cast on. Look. Oh, do you know what it is? Everybody's shouting. They know what it is. It's the split back snowflake hat. Oh, it's tricky to say, isn't it? That? Very. I find it tricky to say. And I'm missing it because Kay wants one. And she had yes. appropriate yarn, which is here. And you'll be pleased to know that I successfully managed to... Do this myself. Cake them up. Did you keep the label? Oh, I, I that's will, too much to ask, isn't it? I will admit I was absolutely petrified the whole time. Well, I was part of the problem year. is that Swift. Let's not talk about how You're going to do a review. rubbish that Swift is. You're going I've to got. do a review on that Swift. I am going to do a review on the Swift because yes. I don't care for it. <laughs> well, no, it's important to review I, the good and the bad. And yeah, Kay's been using this a long time. A long time. I've had it for a good few months. And it's, so, it's the Chowgu wooden one. And I just... I'm, that review will be coming I soon. I am not in love with it. But cast this on and eight rows in. Knitting flat. And I'm really, really enjoying but, it. But you didn't say what the yarn was. I don't know what it is, Kay. It's Cascade 220. That's why I'm enjoying Just it. good old Cascade 220 in a natural colour. And then this is a pink, but it hasn't kept the label. It's just a really pale pink that I've had in my stash for ages, actually. 
and I just think this will make the prettiest hat, won't it? It's going to, the main body's going to be cream, and then the snowflakes will be pink. Well, it has been really cool to cast on and knit this, because I'm not knitting the flat. Yes, I'm doing the, the double knitting in the flat, of course, but I've not knit in the flat in a long time, mm. not just normal normal knitting. So, you know, to be doing this and not having a problem has been great. Mm. But also, as well, to be doing this and enjoying it is also really great. Oh, of course, I'm not on to the colour work yet. No. Even though you could say I've done a tiny bit because <laughs> I cast you on. Just, yeah, you knitting. just cast on with the contrast. But yeah, it is. I, I, I've, I've not I've knit the mittens. The Waiting for Winter Mittens. Oh, from Susan B. Anderson. From Susan yeah. B. Anderson before. Yeah. It's the only thing I've ever knit from Susan B. Anderson. So it's the second thing I've knit and it looks absolutely fine. You know, it looks really clear and easy to read and I, I don't think I'm going to have a problem. Which was the, the key. The key to this was finding something where the pattern was going to be easy for me to read so I didn't have to, you know, decipher. So I could focus solely on for me to nail, gauge produce a nice hat which Kale wants to wear, but then to get cracking on the, the w whichever yoked sweater I pick, what have I done wrong? Well, you've got pearl bumps on there, and I don't think mine was like that. I think mine was like that with the cables. I don't know if you can see, but in the pink... How's that? All I've done is cast on with the pink. Yeah, I know. So how's that happen? I don't know. Mine, my, I don't think mine looked like that. And yeah, I'm only questioning it because this is what happened with the Irish coffee. Right. And I don't know quite what it is that you're doing. So, so w w we've established that th there's an issue with my cast on, on the split back <laughs> snowflake hat. But you, it'll so, be, you don't have to change it, there's no point changing well, it. it. Well, it says cast on and then switch to main colour. So, so I have, I've cast on and then I've switched to main colour. Well, I have. I wonder if you start knitting at the wrong... No, because your tails are all together. I don't know. This same issue... Well, it wasn't an issue because the no. Irish coffee's fine. But this happened with the Irish coffee where he had... There was a... You know, right after the cast on, there was pearl bumps on the right side and they should have been on the other side. And this has happened again with this. He's got the pearl bumps of the pink on the right side. What cast on did you use? You didn't use ger you didn't use the German no. twisted no. thing. Long tail caster. Just normal straightforward. Normal long straightforward tail. long tail caster. I'm very confused. I don't. Just like I did with the Irish coffee. That was normal long tail caster. I don't understand at all, really. Because that's mine. This is obviously very pilly now, but you can see the edge there in blue. There's no. You can't see any pearl bumps in the sort of cable section. But on Dan's, there's pearl bumps, and I, d I don't I don't know how that's happening. You see, I wonder what type of knitter it makes me when I say I'm not really sure what she's going on about. Right. Well, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of I'm things. I'm not disputing it won't make that you're correct at all. But it, w what I'm saying is, but I really don't know what it is that you're doing that. Well, the only thing it could be is that I started knitting at the wrong end, but I but didn't. But you can't have because your tail's yeah. there, aren't they? Looky, looky. So, and I've done, I, I absolutely promise you, I have done this pattern with a stitch counter to perfection. And but it's I not, just... I mean, it, it looks fine. Clearly it doesn't to you. Well, no, it is fine. It, I'm just puzzled, is the thing. It, I'm not asking you to rip it out or anything like that. I'm just really puzzled because this same thing happened previously and I just don't know what it is he's doing. If anybody has got any idea, then please let me know. That would be They might good. struggle to say that because they weren't here. No. Oh, right. Okay, that's fine. No, no, I, I just mean, you know, w would you have to be sat next to me watching what very, I was well, doing? Well, very possibly, But what yeah. precisely could I have done wrong? I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, whatever, I'm enjoying knitting it. It's going to be absolutely fine when it's finished because the same issue arose with the Irish coffee and that's absolutely fine. Um, so my journey into colour work has begun. Excellent. What else is on your needles? Well, I've got a new, another new thing. I've been wanting to knit this actually or something like this for ages. Do you know how, I mean, I don't know if you do know that I really like these, but I really like the 
cowl shawl hybrid things. Do you know like Zuzu's petals? And then I've also knit that one, the An Anguli cowl, was it called? The ones where you literally just stick them over your head and it kind of looks a bit shawl-like, but it just sits there like a cowl. Really love these. And I've wanted another one. And in the, the vein of never gonna knit you up, I thought I'm gonna use something that's from Stash. And I found this pattern, I've had it in my queue for a while, and I found this one. It's by Hilary Smith Callis. And she's done a load of these in various different ways. The one I'm doing is the Dewberry, and it looks like this. You just pop it over your head, and I think it's just a perfect little thing you know, I, I just really love them I, and I really love to wear them. You don't have to fuss with them. They don't fall off. You don't have to adjust them. So I really love them. So this is actually knit in, it was a worsted stroke kind of Aran weight yarn. And I thought, well, I've not really got a lot of, of worsted weight or thicker weight yarn in the right quantity. It doesn't take a whole lot, actually. There's two sizes. You can knit a smaller one or a larger one. But what I, I thought is I'll go through my stash and see if there's anything I can double to sort of approximate that, that thickness. And I've had this particular yarn in my stash for it must be five years. Honestly, it must be. It's pre-podcast, I'm absolutely certain. And I thought if I double this, I'm going to get a nice, a nice weight worsted, probably heavy worsted. But it's, I'm using Malabrigo Arroyo, which is a sport weight... I say it's a sport weight, but actually, I mean, the yardage is 335 yards. So I would, that's more like a heavy fingering, isn't it? I don't think it's a really plump sport weight, if you, if you like. Um, and it's in the English rose colourway. And I had two skeins. I bought these ages ago. I actually bought three skeins when I bought it, I remember, with the intention of knitting like a cardigan for Bryony. She was obviously way younger. But when I bought the skeins, I noticed that the colours were quite different, even though they were all the same colourway. And of course, we all know that can happen. But I, was, I wasn't as experienced at the time and didn't understand that I could have alternated skeins. And to be honest, I don't like to do that now, so I probably wouldn't have wanted to do that. So I used one of the skeins to knit a shawl for Nana Wendy a few years ago. And then the other two have just sat in my stash. So I thought, right, if I double these, I'm going to get, you know, a nice plump sort of worsted. <laughs> They're not quite that bright. But I don't know if it's coming off, but this one isn't as bright as this one. It's much duller. So that, you know, I never knew what I was going to do with these two skeins because I didn't want to alternate in a project. And I thought, you know, if I use them in a, a larger shawl, it's going to be obvious when I've changed yarns and I just because I just don't like to alternate. So they've just sat there. So I'm doubling them because when you double them, it kind of mingles that difference and it's it's absolutely fine. And I only cast this on yesterday and I'm just about I'm on the last row before you join in the round. So what you do is you knit flat initially, just like a shawl, and then at a certain point you join in the round and then just carry on in the round. So I'm at the point where I'm just about to join in the round. So it's kind of scrunched up. But it's a series of like garter ridges and just an eyelet, just a really simple eyelet pattern. Oops, I'm trying to spread it out. There you go. You can see it. And actually having the different tones from the two different balls really works in it because it just makes the whole thing just look like it's a really nice tonal yarn. It knits up so quick. You know, if I'd, I think this was like a couple of hours knitting yesterday and I'm ready to join in the round. It's really quick. The pattern's brilliantly written, very, very clear and just lovely to knit. You know, you just basically work your way through the different sections lovely really clear there's a schematic as well in there so you know the size that you're kind of aiming for and I've measured this top edge and it's a you know it's about the size that it should be at the point that I join in the round so all all is all is cool one thing I did notice I think it's just with doing the eyelets I think it'll be fine can you see how it kind of bumps out it doesn't do it so much on this side but on this side 
kind of bumps out here where the eyelets are. I don't know what's causing that. Will blocking sort that out? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure. It, I'm sure it will. Yeah, and that's going to be joined in the round anyway. So I'll start knitting like this on the next round. And this is the bit that goes round your neck anyway, so you won't even see it. So this is. It'll be like this. Look, that goes round your neck. And then now start knitting in the round. So really quick, I think you know I've got I've knit through the setup, two sections, and I'm just about to start section three. You then work through section three, section four, and then if you want to knit a larger size, you carry on a bit longer, and then you just do the edging and you're finished. So a super quick and just lovely project. I'm knitting it on five millimeters, which is what was recommended, and these are Knit Pick Sunstruck wooden needles which are absolutely fine really you know nice to work with and they look quite soft soft they look like i'd ruin them in one sitting you probably would ruin them dan when he uses wooden needles it ends, up, it ends up with ridges because his stitches are so tight on the needles they bite into the wood i mean that's terrible isn't it so i reckon i'll have that finished for next time Yes, the speed you've got. Yeah, because it's, it's just so quick and it's so lovely to knit on something that's, qu you know, just a nice quick project. Because more often than not, I'm knitting with lighter weight yarns. I know Dan's vest isn't, but that's a bigger project anyway. But this will just be a quick, a really quick knit. So I'd really recommend it, you know, if you fancy, if you like as well, those kind of stick over the head, no fuss shawls, then... I don't know, it's not really a shawl. It's more of a cowl, isn't it? Then I'd definitely give it a go. It's a lovely, lovely knit. So, what's the last new cast on from me this episode? This. Oh, uh, it's a recast on. Last episode, this was the Uncommon Dragon Socks. That got ripped out. And this is... Look how wiggly. Checked, and this is the Checks and Square pattern. Right. So it looks so much better in that. Yarn. It does. It does. It really, really does. Yeah. What I've done is I've selected my two favourite patterns, which I've selected them as favourites, be largely because Kay and Briny, respectively, both love those particular mm. pairs of socks the most. So I'm knitting another pair of Jack and Squared, and I'm also knitting another pair of the Stree socks. First cast on though was these, and considering that. That's just in two weeks. For me, that's not a bad effort. But oh, what cast just... on did you use? That's there? the German one. Oh, that's why I asked about that other. Right, I because didn't do the German. Because you do get those pearl bumps on that side. I have to think about it when I do Are the German. You sure you one. didn't do the Positive. German? Positive. Right, okay. So there is the checked and squared. It is a really easy pattern to knit because it's just a, a two row repeat, mm. and you know you can read your, your knitting. So you know, unlike the Uncommon Dragon, which yes, I had nailed, but was you know, unbelievably intense. Mm. This is a much more relaxed, and yeah. with socks, I've re that's really, really, really what I want. I think what I've established is I'm not a sock knitter. No, which is great because I am. So it's not a pro. It's, it's not. It's absolutely not a problem. I, and as we were saying before, I don't think you should force yourself to knit things just because you think that you should. No. As a knitter, that you should be knitting that thing. I think that it would be remiss of me to forget how to knit socks. So I think it's important I that think I do. Forget. I Well, if you don't do something for a long time, I think it's easy to forget. So I think I should make sure that once or twice a year, I do knit a pair of socks. Well, we'll see though, because, if you, want to. you know, I'll, I'll make the decision at, at the end of the year. It's really pretty, it just looks pretty in this yarn, the texture. There's lots of techniques involved in knitting socks, which you yeah. don't use when you knit anything else. And if I hadn't done this, you know, if I hadn't really got my head into it, I, I don't think I'd be in quite the position I'm in with everything else. So it, it's not... Because there's nothing really quite like knitting socks in, in knitting. I love knitting socks, with, with, but you know, that's... Do, you know, I'm on about the techniques. What other project is similar to socks in turning corners and decreases uh, and... Not, not, uh, not decreases. No, I mean... Well, I suppose... Closing mm, gaps and... Mittens... But maybe not. It's a different thing. Know, I mean, it I've, is I've a knit different mittens. thing. Yeah. Knitting it's easier. Mitten, it's way knit. easier. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Apart from that thummy bit. But that's not difficult. No, with repetition, yeah. you'd be fine. Yeah, it's you? a much simpler process than knitting socks. Yeah. But once you knit a few pairs of pairs of socks, it, I think it sort of becomes second nature, doesn't it? Yeah, and I, you know, I don't have an issue now. I know, you know, I remember a year and a half ago, 
Gus, it decreases. I, I used to have to watch mm. your videos every mm. time. Mm. Whereas now, I don't have to do that. And I'm really glad I don't mm. have to do that. And, you know, learning about the different heels, I really, I'd be sad never to knit the Isle of Partridge heel at least once a year. Because well, can, that, that's you fun. If you want to do it. But you'll, you'll be doing that hopefully on, because want, Dan wants to do a fingering weight pair of socks on you before you end your quest. I'll also be doing it on these. And right. on the streets, because I'm sure they were on the streets. Well, you can put in whatever much. you want. Yes, exactly, exactly. So even if it isn't... If you like, yeah, just stick it in. That's do what I'll like do. That? Yeah. And also, we'll we'll pick the... I mean, maybe I should do that circular toey thing that you oh, like. Right. Yeah. Well, you, you yeah. just tell me whatever you think when I get to the end, because you're wearing them at the end of the day. So they need to be right for you and B. Oh, we wear all of them that you made. Yeah, so. which is great. But I just don't get that sort of... That warm, fuzzy, lovely feeling. Mm. I don't know why, I just don't. So that's why, that's perhaps, time. a garment knitter is born. It's time for the final Bakery Bears bucket list proposals for our 2018 bucket list. Yes, our bucket list will be back at the end of this year when we will be reviewing something that we've done through the year. Okay. <laughs> Crossing that off our bucket list and then proposing something to take its place. So today sort of is the last time to, to really shape that list. We've already got lots of proposals that are already there. Right. And we're going to review them all next week, uh, next episode, sorry, before we then pick one to do. So today's a big day, really. Oh, he loves to put the pressure on, doesn't he? I'm ignoring him. I'm not going to be affected by what he says because I've got something in my head and I'm just going to say it. But before we do the Bakery Bears bucket list, we're doing a, a, just a one-off segment and it's simply called, why does a walnut whip not have a walnut on it anymore? <gasps> what is this all about, everybody? <laughs> Do you know this? Have you realised that a walnut whip is just now a whip? There's no walnut on a walnut whip. Dan realised this the other day when you bought some car a caramel version don't, and he came home and he said... Don't buy them, they're not nice. They're now produced by Nestle and they didn't used to be, I don't think. Round trees, it was round trees. I think so. And he came home and he said... There's no walnut on top of a walnut whip anymore. I said, what? How can that be right? So I Googled it, and last August I found this article in the Telegraph talking about how the fact that they've removed the walnut from a walnut whip. And apparently the reason that they say they've done it is because the price of walnuts has soared astronomically, and plus they think it would be now more of an accessible product for everyone, because not everybody likes nuts. <laughs> This well, is the most perhaps, ridiculous thing. Perhaps I, would, I wouldn't buy something called a walnut whip if you don't like nuts. If you don't like and nuts. What about if you do like the nuts? The clue's in the name. Does everyone. that mean for all of us who do enjoy nuts that we now get persecuted? Because... So that our favourite chocolate I, treats... I think the world has gone a bit nut crazy. This is a whole... The world's gone nuts. <laughs> nuts about nuts. I find it hilarious that, like, on a jar of peanut butter, it has to say, warning... Made may contain nuts. I mean, obviously, a nut allergy is a serious thing. I totally get that. It's an entirely serious thing. Yeah. But I kind of think if you are allergic to peanuts, you're going to know that you shouldn't be eating peanut butter. I can understand them saying may contain nuts when actually some quite often a product is made in a factory, isn't it, where nut products yeah. are made. and there might be some cross-contamination. And there might be some cross-contamination. I totally understand that, and I think that's fantastic that they put that on there. But when the product is named... A walnut whip. A walnut whip. It's probably going to have nuts in it. So now, but you see, the thing is, though, are you telling me, I don't believe, and I would need to check this, when you consider that virtually every chocolate thing that you buy actually does say on it may contain nuts, yeah. are you telling me that that walnut whip has been made in a nut sterile environment? Oh no, it won't. It won't have done. No, no, and I think so. Their don't main, hide behind. The main reason, is, apparently, in this article, I don't know, I didn't go into it in depth, but the main reason in this article was because the cost of nuts has soared. And do you know what? I think either increase the price of a walnut whip, if that's the case, and keep it as it always was, or just withdraw the product entirely. Because the whole point of a walnut whip... They may as well whip, have withdrawn the product. The whole point of a walnut whip was you saved the... what I always saved the walnut for last, didn't you? Well, because that was the best bit. Nice. I used to love walnut so whips. Don't go there, folks. They were a real treat having a walnut whip. Yeah, because there was there was a good amount of chocolate yeah, in it. Yeah, and the whippy and stuff in the middle was really. You nice. know, I remember. You know, you really had to go at the chocolate yeah, to get through it. Not yeah. anymore. 
you know, it's and such it a nice swizz. Chocolate. It's such a swizz what they've done. I don't and really it did like say Nestle. this in the article. I don't particularly like Nestle chocolate. In the article that you referenced, it did say a lot of people are saying this is following the same trend as so many other companies who are reducing, reducing the size. That's another whilst keeping the prices the same. That's another thing. Like a bar of chocolate now, I think generally it's forty two grams is quite common where they always used to be 50 grams. And, you know, they're always saying, oh, you know, we're thinking of people's health and blah, blah, blah. All that people right. do is they eat two. No, 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 no. no. Kate, or, they, or they buy a huge bar. Yeah, we know that this is twaddle because you go into the supermarket and there will be, let's say, a bounty, for example, and it'll be 62 pence. You'll walk up the aisle to where the big chocolate bars are yeah. and you'll buy, on offer, there's always yeah. a huge chocolate huge bar for a quid. For a so it's got nothing to do with people's health. What it's got to but do that's with that's what they say. What it's, it's got just, to do with they're it's just a, getting a bigger profit for a smaller amount that's of exactly, produce. That's exactly exactly what it's about. And everyone knows that. Yeah. So you stop know, so don't, messing us around. Yeah, exactly. And start exactly. making our chocolate bars the way they were made. Absolutely. We want a decent sized bar of chocolate. I've just realised what we can do. We can make our own. We can go, even though the chocolate's not very good, we will go and buy some of these new walnut whips and we'll stick walnuts on the top. We could do that. Yes, and then we should sell them. Yeah, even though it, they aren't the same product, are they? But nothing is. Why? It'll get close. It'll be yeah. closer. I don't know. Anyway. What is the world coming to, everybody? What is the world coming to? It is time for the very last proper Bakery Bears bucket list. Um, so it, it, this is the moment where Kay and I get to propose something to potentially go onto our list. And of course, there is the option for each of us, after we've heard the proposal, to either vote it in or to veto it. And there's no arguments. If it's vetoed, it's vetoed, it's gone. You know, there's no ill feeling at all. So I think, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You go first. Okay, so I'm going first. Now, it's quite detailed this one, so I'm just gonna to need to refer, don't look. I'm just going to need to refer to my notes every so often. Otherwise you'll miss that. No, 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 you cannot <laughs> look without covering them up. We need to get some of those horsey things, don't we? Those horsey oh, visors. Blinkers, blinkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, horsey visors. Horsey visors. Maybe they should yeah. be called that. This is the first proposal that I'm putting forward where I have said on a, a number of occasions, I want to do this before I am no longer on this earth right other proposals that we've put forward we, we've never had a, a bucket list before we've never done anything like no. this before so all of this has been you know we've stopped and thought and you know this i've been saving it up really because i've always wanted to do this so what is it well as you know Kay and i and we are both genuinely interested in history yeah and that's from the romans to the normans to the tudors and beyond, there's one day in English history which really transformed the country. It did. Okay. Well, it didn't transform the country. It stopped the country being transformed. I think I know what I think I think I know what your thing is. On Tuesday, the sixth of June, nineteen forty-four. I do. The Allies began an operation called Overlord. There were landings on the beaches in Normandy, and the five beaches, of course were Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. And these were the first battlegrounds of D-Day. And I think we should visit them. I knew, I knew, yeah, I, I knew that was coming. But not only that, if we, if we were in that part of the world... So they're in Northern France, is that correct? Yes. If we were in that part of the world, it also opens up the opportunity to explore the other day in English history, which transformed the country. Now, D-Day, you could say that we won. Mm -hmm. This other day in English history, it was the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Right. Now, what we could do as part of this trip is we could start the trip in Saint-Étienne-de-Camp, Saint which is the burial place of William the Conqueror. And it's the home to the Chateau de Camp which was his main seat in France. Right. And it's really close to there. So you could start the journey there. And you can visit there? Yeah. Ah. It's like a, it's like a stay at home. Oh, so does but, somebody still live there? Uh, I don't know if somebody still lives there, right. but it is a roof. It's, it's proper house. It's, it's, it's like a fortified Chatsworth. All oh, right, okay. So start the day at the birthplace of William the Conqueror. 
or, or the trip. <laughs> then go and visit all the beaches. And then on the return journey home, in finish... In one day? No, 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 no. No, I'm not saying in one day. That's oh, right. why I changed it from when I start the trip. Right. I go visit where William the Conqueror, uh, you know, his main seat, where he governed from. Prior to, of course, him then coming across the channel and winning at the Battle of Hastings. But on our journey to the Battle of Hastings, we would stop up off at the beaches. So we would go and visit all the beaches. And, you know, this is probably a week. It's probably a week's holiday, mm. isn't it? So, you know, you go and, and visit the different beaches. And then on the journey home, because it's, it's on route, or well, you could make it on route, go and visit the, the site of the Battle of Hastings and then come home. Oh, so is that just a field? No, it's an English heritage site. Oh, right. Because Battle Abbey was built right. on the, the, the place where oh, they right. claim okay, okay. that... So that, it's not just a blank field? No, no, no. Yeah. Obviously there is a field there, but an abbey was built. What, what William the Conqueror said, because of course, the yeah. links to the bakery bears are huge because William the Conqueror brought the whole monastic and abbey mm. culture with him. Mm. And, you know, one of the first abbeys that was built then in that, that sway, because, you know, if you look at, you know, Cistercians and, and so many of them all started out in France. That was, the, their homes mm. were all in France. And it was because of the Normans. My proposal is to go and visit the D-Day beaches. Okay. This mile is also actually something that I've spoke about over the past couple of years and we've just never got around to doing and I don't know why it is we've never got around to doing it but I thought well if I put it on the bucket list then I stand more of a chance of it happening. Well you, you, you're of course taking a risk because there is always... Well you could do that yeah but it, well me and Brian you'll just go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I've, I have spoken about this several times and actually I said to Brian recently we should, we should watch the film again because we haven't watched it for a while. But the film of the Railway Children was filmed not a million miles from us here and I'm talking about the version that was made in the 70s I believe it was and it was Bernard Cribbins in it and Jenny Agatha and we loved the film, me and Brian you loved the film. And it's directed of directed course by, by Lionel oh, Jeffries. Yes. Who and not played Daniel Jeffries? Who was in Chitty Chitty Bang yes, Bang? Yes. He was Dick Van Dyke's dad it was in the Mass. Push, push, and the interesting isn't thing it? about Lionel Jeffries was when Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was filmed, he was younger than Dick Van Dyke. He was, Dyke. yeah, all the same age or something, and he was playing his father. Yeah, insane. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was filmed not far away, and there's actually the train station that was actually featured in it is still a working train station, and I believe there's a steam train. That you can go on as well around that area and i know i know i know for definite there's a walk that you can do that takes in like the three chimneys house which you know obviously somebody lives in there and you can't go in or anything but you can walk past it i think it's about three miles where you, you know you'll see a lot of the things from the films and me and brian have talked about this for ages saying oh you know we'll go there and you know we'll squeeze through that style that um perks took his basket through and all things like that so I would just really love to do that and I'd like to do it on a, a nice weather day where we can take a picnic. So I know you can't really plan for the weather and you'd have to book train tickets and stuff. But however you know, however we could organise it, you know, we, we would do that. But the, I would just love to do that. I'd like to go on a steam train, I'd like to have a nice picnic and I'd like to visit the, the, the all of the sites that you can visit that are connected with the film. Right. So we are at the point of voting or vetoing, mm -hmm. our final proposals for the bucket list. Who's so, who's going first? Well, I went first, so you, you vote or veto mine first. Okay. So Enough talk. Okay. Will it be a vote? Will it be a veto? Will she pick <laughs> up the right card? I know, I'm gonna pick up the wrong one, aren't I? I'm still thinking. <laughs> no, okay, I'm ready, okay. Go on then. Okay, I think I'm ready. No, I'm ready, okay. Ready. Yes. Oh, I'm really thrilled actually because it is something that feels quite important to I me. I know you've wanted to do that for ages and I think as long as, that's why I was asking the question, I think as long as we had a base you know to work from and we weren't in hotels and I, oh, I, don't, I just of don't all like, the things, of all I the things that I've hotels. Of all the things that I've sort of spoken about and proposed, I think this is the one. I would put this personally. I would put this above walking the length of Hadrian's oh, Wall, right. and okay. uh, just because, just because I feel like we should do it. Right. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Hey, it's interesting actually because 
what, what we Bryony would love it. Yeah. She would love it. What we could do is we could go to Red Car Beach because that <laughs> oh was used. My, yeah, we could. I can't remember the name of that film, but it's, it's a film. nice beach at Red Car, isn't it? That's the film with I think Kira Knightley was yeah. Atonement. Oh, I don't do That was the film. I've never seen the film because I'm not a fan of Kira Knightley. Kira Knightley. No. Atonement, they I'm sure, I'm, I'm absolutely certain it was D-Day beaches that they used. You're right. And they looked across the globe and to they find somewhere ended up in red car. that looked, you know, as, as much like run-down 1940s France and they selected it is red a, car. It is a bit like that, but I think it's a nice beach. Yeah, yeah. So now it's Kay's, what we call it, railway trill children trip. Yeah? Trill, not children. Railway children trip. See, it's quite a long way, though. It's quite a long way. I think it will. It will be a. Is it? Yeah, it's not a short. Trip. It's like West Yorkshire, isn't it? I don't think it'd be a short. Trip. We looked into historically, you know, potentially doing something where we film there, but unfortunately, there's just not a strong enough story. I, mean, to... I think that's maybe why we've not done it yet, isn't yeah. it? Because we just decided that, yeah, maybe it wasn't... It's a day out which you could all go and enjoy, but yeah. there's not really a story to tell because it's just a film was filmed there. That's not very nice, well, is no, it? It was just a film that was filmed there. Yeah. Oh, you devil, are you just making all that up? No, no, it's all true. Yeah. But, you know, it's just a day out. That's not an issue. It's just a day out. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, how could I veto... Something that's just a day out. All oh, right. You well, can't you veto have. something that's just a day out. You just said it's a long way and it'll be a blah, blah, blah. Well, no, I was saying that from your point of view. But right. you manage Lime Park and it's a lot less than that. I managed Lime Park because I'm clearly a 90-year-old woman. That was a long way, Kay. It was a long day, actually, that. That was four and a half hours in the car round trip. It, yeah, and it's it was over the side of the country that I don't like particularly travelling to. I mean, that was a very special new adventure. It was, and it yeah. was a long it was a long day, but it was lovely. And it was. Mr. Darcy was in that spot, and so it was worth. That's it. all we need to say. Well, and th 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 there you go. You know, I mean, so if it means so much to you going mm. to those mm. places, because it's clearly a film that you know you and Bryony absolutely adore, mm. it's definitely worth doing. And Bryony loves Bernard Cribbins. We watch him still on the TV now, you know, in, on CBeebies, and he's just such a fabulous... Old Jack's boat. Old Jack's boat. It's Super. fantastic. So, so yeah. our final two proposals... Wow, both voted. Both go onto the list. So next time, it's time for us to mm. pick something to do. Neil, I've just been mentioning there New Adventures, and New Adventures Season 2 actually gets underway sooner than you think. We're deep in production right now for um, our eight episode season. It's gonna be one episode longer than last year, which right. is cool. And we've got some amazing destinations. What was so great was the planning that we did for New Adventures season one has identified so many cool sites. You know, getting to the end of Favourite Places to Knit, it was always like, where are we gonna go? Because we take you everywhere. But you know, but branching out your thoughts and going right okay clean slate let's mm. look at this there's loads of cool places so get ready for that it's coming up it's time for us to find out what what do you think come on um dan jones yes what's off your needles thank you very much i had no idea what was next you know but there's nothing off your needles so i couldn't ask there isn't, myself but i do have something i want to show needles. you yes and it's very exciting but before that i will give you a quick flash of Yay! They, have, they haven't been washed yet because he only finished them last night. I did. Now... I love how the yarns worked out kind of stripey here. Yes. I think that looks really nice. It's a beautiful yarn. Because it's a different different stitch count to up here because you decreased more for the foot, didn't you? Yes. So it's knit up differently. I really like that. Yeah, it, it really is a beautiful yarn. It's a this pink. It's lovely. I mean, it was all It's, it's all a lovely, lovely pink. It's very similar to the pink on that cowl I was knitting. It's the first time ever, as you know, that I've done contrast toes and contrast heels. And I really, really enjoyed more the making use of all the yarns. Right. You know, because that was yarn I'd knit with. Yeah. So it's sort of finished with, and I don't do scrappy projects. So, you know, I would never get more value out of that yarn. And, and similarly with, with the heel, it's yarn I'd already knit with. It's leftovers. So to suddenly it's great be able to use it, yeah. it's really cool. It gives you a really warm feeling. Yeah, you know, we were speaking yeah. before about the feelings. And, you know, to think, I've enjoyed this once already. And now, you know, it's getting to sort of live on 
in another project too. It's just lovely. They're really nice. There's elements to this particular uh, design which are a, a bit bonkers, which is the, the way cutting oh, the yarns when we didn't need to yeah, cut the yarns and... You, you don't a lot need more. To, you don't need to cut the yarn, do you? And you need to contrast heel. And and she had you cut the yarn, but it was you had ends all over. I don't there know was a what lot of was ends. going on. There's a lot of ends. And the other yeah. thing as well that I really struggled with. Oh, the toes. I really tried to get the toe right this time, but I just could because, not make head and tail of what she was trying to get you to do. Really, because the pattern is written for you, magic looping. I think it is. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's magic, magic loop. But then she was telling me to put a marker at the end of a row. How can you do, you, how can you do that with magic loop? It was really you difficult know, to work out. It was out. just confusing. The whole thing was a bit confusing. So we just... We so just, I just did the same thing. Just kind of fudged it. Which, which is, well, it's exactly what I did before, mm. even though it it's does not, look It's not, because one of them... It's shorter. No, because one of them wasn't in the right... One of them... I don't know, they look different on the... This one looks kind of twisted, do you know what I mean? This yeah. one twists off in a funny direction, whereas that one's straight. Right. I don't know. Anyway, they fit Brian Anyway, so. they're done and they fit, and, you know, perfect. Done. Show us. Well, I don't have anything finished knitted-wise, but. but I've had lots of people ask me if I would show and just talk about... The present that I made for Bryony for Christmas, which was the Newt Scamander suitcase. So I thought I'd just sort of quickly show you that and what I did and the things that went into it and how I kind of tackled the, the task. Now I will show you the suitcase, but it's quite awkward. So Dan's going to put in some better sort of photos of it and little videos. Just as she's talking, you'll get yeah, to see Yeah, but it. I will show it to you just so you can see sort of the scale of it next to a human body. <laughs> Uh, so this is the suitcase, here it is, and I polished it, can you see how shiny it is? And it's quite battered on this side, there's loads of scuffs. That's the point. Yeah, and I got this on eBay, it cost me £13, one three, thirteen, plus shipping, it was less than £20, it came from somewhere in Scotland, and you can see on one side it's got a label of a hotel where it was obviously used. It's Ross Hotel in... Ross's Hotel. Sorry, Ross... Oh, there's three S's! <laughs> I never noticed that! R-O-S-S-S. -S -S. You should look it up. See Ross's... Yeah, Ross's Hotel in Arakar. Yeah. Arakar. Arakar, I'm sure you don't say it like that. <laughs> and it's basically a leather suitcase with, you know, the catches that you have. And the thing that Bryony loves the most is if I shut one, that noise. If you've seen Fantastic Beasts, that happens quite a lot. You know where the animals inside are trying to get out. And you hear that noise, she loves that. She was playing with this all Christmas Day. And it's, it's in fairly good condition for the price it was. It was dirty. It was filthy dirty. I think it had been stored in an attic is all I can think. And it smelled really foisty. Do you know, just like it had been just not touched for donkey's years. But what I did was, the first thing I did was I stuck it outside with the lid open and I left it out there. I brought it in at night time, obviously, and it was dry days. Just left it out there for a few days just to try and air it out a bit. And then what I did was, I, I first of all, I cleaned the whole thing. I just got some soap and water went at it with, you know, cloth, put my rubber gloves on, cleaned the whole thing and it was dirty. And then I dried it really thoroughly because it's obviously um, a leather coating. And then I just put a layer of beeswax on it, just plain beeswax, rubbed it all in to everything. And then Dan WD 40 the catchers for me because they were a bit stiff and a bit rusty. So I cleaned all those up and WD-40 is good for cleaning rusty bits off as well, so I cleaned up all the catchers and they work really nicely now. And then the inside had like a, a dark red paper lining. It wasn't very attractive and Newt suitcase has actually got a light coloured lining with kind of stripes on I think, or some kind, maybe not stripes, some kind of design. So I thought, right, I'm going to get some wallpaper. 
and I'm going to reline it. And I looked around to get wallpaper that looked as similar as possible, but I couldn't really find anything that looked similar. So I just found some that was really thick. It's a really thick wallpaper, which I thought would be great. And it has like a, a metallic sort of sheen to it. It's plain, but with a metallic sort of sheen. And I thought that would work really well. And I relined it. So I don't know how well you can see it, but again, Dan's going to put some um, pictures in. But it just now looks lovely and clean and fresh and new. That took a while, let me put it down now and then I can tell you. That did take me a while to reline it because I could only do it when Bryony was at school as well. I just used like an all-purpose glue. I don't even, it was in like the sort of decorator section in B&Q, wasn't it? Yeah. In a big tub. I think it was like a PVA glue basically. I used a lot of um, glue and... I just, all I did was I made templates, I just cut them to size and glued it on top of the existing paper. In some areas I had to glue down the old paper first because it was coming away and then glue the new paper on top. But that, it all went fine, it just took me a bit of time, probably two or three days. So then what I did was I got some lavender, I've got loads of um, lavender upstairs, so I just made some little sachets and I just threw them into the box, into the suitcase shut the lid and just left it for a few days and that really helped because I think it, it kind of neutralized all the smell and really helped to get rid of that sort of foisty smell so by then it, it was fine so then I had to think about the contents so I wanted it to look exactly like or as much as I could exactly like new suitcase you know I was so excited for it to open it and just go oh. you know it looks exactly like the muggle-worthy suitcase when he opens it up when he's going through customs when he gets to New York. So I hunted around and uh, I managed to get as close as I possibly could to all the things that were in the suitcase. There was one thing in there that I couldn't work out what it was and it looked like a kind of big leather glove, which I'm presuming is something to do with what he, you know, does with the animals, I don't know. Or it could have been a pair of leather slippers. I don't know what that was, but I didn't pursue that really any further because I didn't know what it was. But I bought some pyjamas and they're old fashioned drawstring pyjamas. These have been washed, I, you know, I laundered them because I thought she'll want to wear them, but she doesn't. She just wants to keep them in the suitcase and that's absolutely fine. And I really had to hunt around. And again, I tried to find some that looked like the same print as Newt's. And I did find some which were closer, but I couldn't find them in stock anywhere. It was, this, it was the same brand as these. So Max, it's called. I think it's just an old fashioned brushed cotton. And I found these in like a really old fashioned gents outfitters online. And they cost me like 30 pounds. They were more than the price of the suitcase, but I couldn't find them any cheaper anywhere. And I think because they are more of a kind of handmade thing, they're just more expensive. They're not as mass produced as usual pajamas. So they went in the suitcase and there was an alarm clock. And I found this one just in Wilco's in town and it was five pounds. And I liked this one, although it's not the same color as the one in the suitcase. The name on it is Jones. It says Jones on here, so I thought that was quite sweet. So there's a, a little alarm clock. And then we've got a handkerchief, which was easy, easy peasy enough. There was a map of New York in the bag. So what I did actually was, I got this really old one, which actually is just a page from a book by the looks of it. There's New Mexico on the back of it. <laughs> but I've got an old, map of New York and then I've got a modern one which I thought was fun it's one of these that does this which is kind of fun I thought she'd like that so there was the map of New York and then there was some binoculars in the bag and she does have a pair of binoculars but they're big old things aren't they Nana Wendy gave her so I found these really cute little ones on just on Amazon I think they were like 12 pounds they were really cheap and they're brilliant they're by Avantex they're, you know, they're fantastic. We were kind of spying out of the window on Christmas Day. They're brilliant, they're really good. And they fold up small, the little bags, so they're good. She, she likes looking for birds and things on holiday, so we thought they'd be useful anyway. And a, a magnifying glass as well that was in there, which, but she already had this. Nana Wendy gave her this years ago, didn't she? It's really pretty, it's got butterflies on. But she totally forgot she had it, so she thinks that that's new. 
So that was in there as well. And then a very lovely friend heard me say on the podcast that I would have liked to have knit, knitted a pair of Hufflepuff socks, but I wasn't going to have time. So she knit a pair for Bryony, and that, you know, I was so touched. And she, you know, she knit them super quick and sent them straight away, and I had them in time, to, you know, to put into the suitcase. So she knit this lovely pair of socks, and these have been worn. You can see how much of it being worn. But she loves them, and she wore them all through Christmas and New Year, and it's one of her favourite pairs. So that was so, so kind. So that was all the things that went into the suitcase. I think that was everything. Cool. So, yeah, I thought that would be fun for you to see. So you created a What's Off Your Needles. It's What's Off Someone Else's Needles. That's true, it's What's Off Someone Else's Needles, yeah. But... Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for an unbelievably special Day of the World Food Dial. Now, okay, I think you should just pull it across. And as you're pulling it across, I will just tell you a few things. Okay. Today we are trying United States military rations. <laughs> hold it up, hold it up. Are you ready? Now. Look. United States military rations were first introduced in the 18th century and back then yeah. it came with four ounces of rum. Did I'm, it? I'm guessing when we open this it's not going to have the rum in it. Oh, sadly not. Well, we wouldn't drink it, but sadly not. By 1832, actually, the rum had gone yeah. and they'd replaced it with coffee and sugar. Right. So you can see that they're trying to give them... So first it was feel good, second Is there was, going to be a drink in here like, as well? No, well, I don't know, I don't know. We, are, we deliberately have not even opened the no. packaging of this. World War I saw the beginnings of what we're trying today. Right. Um, the reserve ration was first issued in 1917 for troops away from the field kitchen, and that's yeah, what this yeah, is. Yeah. It normally consisted of 12 ounces of fresh bacon, oh. or one pound of canned meat, oh. normally corned beef, of oh, course. Oh, nice. I like corned beef. But then two cans, cans of hard bread. Hard bread? Two cans of hard bread, what? I don't understand that. Or hard tack biscuits. Now, I've heard oh, of hard tack biscuits yeah, before. Yeah, I've heard of those. It also came with coffee, sugar, and salt. Right. But there was a tobacco ration, 0 0.4 ounces, no. and 10 roll up papers. <gasps> Can you believe that? By World War II, yeah. this had become what's known as the C ration. Right. And the C ration was a complete pre cooked, ready to eat meal, just, just like, like this. this. Now, today, it's become the meal M-R-E, and that's what this is, meal, sorry, yeah. Yeah, meal, ready, ready to, to eat. eat. That's it, that's it. So today, it's become the meal, the, the M-R-E, but there's also, I love this, there's also a first strike ration. That's for right. someone who isn't in a position to sit down, it's someone on the move. Gosh. So first strike ration is clearly when you're, you know... On the move food. Well, you, you're scared. clearly fighting, and, and it's a quick... But then also as well, and I thought this was so cool, there's also a hoo bar. That's how it's spelt. <laughs> hoo -ah. H oh, so Trouble zero, A-H. Right. And that's a high energy bar. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. hoo -ah. So for when you just need... Yeah, that. yeah, I need a boost. Right. Now, the, High energy bars have actually been included in um, army rations since World War One. Yeah. But the high energy, it was a really high quality chocolate bar. Oh, can I just tell bar. you? What? Ayla uh, from Clan of the Cave. Yes, yes. <laughs> she used to make travelling cakes, and that's exactly what they were. Right. High energy. It was fat, and it was nuts and seeds, like flapjack. Lovely. Caveman flapjack. Make me some flapjack. I love it. I've got the ingredients to make some cool. So, So this is it. Department of Defense, United States of America. Warfighter recommended. Yes. Warfighter tested. Yes. Warfighter approved. Yes. This came from a lovely friend. Yes. Who used to be in the military and her son's really interested in sort of all things military. So she bought some of she these. She was sending you a birthday gift, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. And she, and she just put stuck one it of in. These in. We, we opened it and I went, what on earth is this? And then I realized what it was and I said, this is like American army rations. So this is. So we've got ratatouille, ratatouille mixed vegetables, mixed, ve mi mixed vegetables and penne pasta. So open it up. So then. we've not even opened it. Look, there's a peelable seal. So I'm presuming. Well, it says so. Okay. Well, I was going to get scissors, but then I'm presuming these things need to be openable without scissors if you're in the field. But they'd have knives. Yeah. Maybe we'll get scissors. Oh, hang on. 
No, we need scissors. Are you sure? Well, no, I'm not sure. Because it says peelable seal. Are you sure you're peeling the right bit? No, I'm not sure at all. Are you sure you don't just do... Do that. This? No, it's really <laughs> stuck. No. <laughs> oh, we need scissors. Right, I'm going to get scissors. We're not very good army people, are we? No, we can't I'm even sure get you into must our be dinner. able to get into it without scissors. We can't even but, get into our dinner. You know, oh, I'm a bit scared of looking we're just inside. Not, we're just not tough enough. Oh my goodness. I'm a bit scared. Oh! Oh, there's lots of packets in there. Ratatouille. Ooh. Right, that's the ratatouille. Oh. What's that? It's Tabasco sauce. Oh my lord. Oh, nut raisin mix, peanuts raisins. Walnuts, almonds, hazelnuts, peanut butter, palm oil. So this is like a high energy crackers thing. Peanut butter, crackers, strawberry banana dairy shake powder. Oh, I'm scared of that. Allow water just direct for use. Allow water just chemically purified to stand 30 minutes before adding to the powder. Tear, Tear pouch. pouch at the notch. Goodness me. Open zipper. Add six ounces of water. About quarter of a canteen cup. Close the zipper, shake it, and consume promptly. This is the heater. Oh my gosh, this so, is amazing. So full top on MRE. Apples with raspberry puree. Heater and Oh, it's like baby food. Filter lines. Remove MRE pouch and paper sleeve from MRE. Tear off top of bag. What Place do you MRE do with that? Do you just eat that? In with heater. Now, I love this bit here. It's a spoon. I've got a military spoon. With I'm heater, keep this. underneath MRE, hold sleeve level until heater feels warm. To prevent water from escaping, it, it, now there's a thing here, it says sleeve, folded end, MRE, heater, rock or something. <laughs> That's what? what it says there. A rock? You must... Rock or something. You must wedge it on a oh, rock you have to, to wedge keep it on it a rock. Shall I open these crackers? Oh, we've got creamer. Oh. We were only talking about creamer the other day. So we can have coffee with creamer. Coffee with creamer. Are these hardtack biscuits then, I wonder? Iodised salt. Oh, that's heavy. Why is that hot salt so heavy? I think these must be... Oh, look at that. Like hardtacky type biscuits. They don't smell of anything. Do they not? What oh, they? no, it does. It smells like a Jacob's cracker. Does it? Yeah. That doesn't smell too bad. So, where's... Where's the pasta? Where's the pasta? Ratatouille. It must be in there with it. No, that's just... Oh, no. Oh, wait, there's no... Mixed vegetables and penne. It must be in there. Tomatoes, water, whole grain penne. Where? How is the penne in there? It just feels like a liquid. Oh, it's must... Do you think it's all mushed up? Oh, no. So, I'm going to get this out then. So what do we do with the nut raisin mix? You just eat that. Do you? Are you sure? Well, it's just nuts and raisins. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. What else are you going to do with that? So, so I'll cut the top off this, and we'll take a look inside. I'm scared. Oh, it is. The pasta's in there. It smells all right. Does it? Yeah. It smells all right. Look. It smells a bit like baby food. It is a bit like baby so food. So I'm going to put this into put a bowl. This has turned into quite quite the thing. This is like a whole. So out of this bag has come... Oh, I'm just stirring the very delicious mm. coffee. I mean, to be... And then we've got... I mean, a, look, I mean, look, 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 look. It's very look. thick. It's a, it's a dairy milkshake thingy. There's there's some pudding, which is like a puree. Apple and raspberry I mean, it smells puree. fine, to be honest. But, I mean, I'd be getting more... Uh, this look, it's oh, just my, oh. it's just a pack of peanut butter. Peanut butter. You just eat eat it on the go. Well, I think you put it on the crackers. I don't think you do. You wouldn't put it on the crackers. Well, you'd I just mean, eat it. maybe you would. I think, would just I think eat people it. would just eat it because it's, it's such a high energy thing, isn't it? It depends what situation you're in. Or if something smells bad, is it that? This is <laughs> this is this is worrying. And we've got a load of nuts, which and you know. So that's what fine. should we use the army spoon for? No, I want to keep the spoon. I don't want to use okay, the spoon. Okay. I want to keep my army spoon. So, you it know... It seriously looks and smells like baby food. It's all right. It's all right? Yeah. Well... It's I think, all right. I think if you had no choice, it's all right. 
That's more than no choice. It's okay. What's I'm not that? certain what that is. There's like stuff in it that's kind of a bit meaty, but there's no meat in there. I it's it's like a, I think there was soy, soy in it. It's like a... There's a weird flavour. So that was the, the, the ratatouille with... What's the crackers like? Does it actually taste of anything? I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to get a flavour. That's all right. I feel like I'm. Do you uh, feel like you're? I'm out in the desert. No, you're like a, not a Navy Seal. What? What is it? Who would eat? Who? Who would have it? I don't know. Do you feel like Jack Bauer? Yeah. Oh, Jack Bauer would de devour. I should go put my <gasps> jacket on. Jack Bauer would devour. <laughs> That's had coffee on it. Okay, I'll use one of these. Oh no. Some strange sort of tissue things. I'm hoping these are not meant to use in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what that smells like? Is that really bad? It's not, it's, it's just, just fruit puree. And uh, I think all these things are doing are serving a purpose, aren't they? They yeah. taste okay. It tastes okay. The quality is surprisingly good. I mean, it's all right. I'm really shocked, actually, that that... that it tastes all right. It really does. I mean, I'm really, really and surprised. And then, you know, we've just got a load of nuts and they'll obviously be fine. Okay, that smells like a medicine I used to have to have when I was a kid. Oh, it smells bad. I mean, it really, 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 really does not smell like. It smells already. really artificially. I don't really want to taste that. We gotta try you? it. We gotta just have a little sip. Okay. <laughs> it's very bananary. You'll hate it. Oh. <laughs> it's really bananary. Oh goodness. Should we have some of the coffee with creamer? Oh. It smells like instant, just instant. I mean, that so tastes like medicine. Um, actually, it needs the sugar. Well, does I it? Won't, well, I think it does. Oh, oh, I've got like a tutti fruity taste going on now. Shall I open the moist towelette? <laughs> is it lemon? Oh, that, that is the worst smelling thing out of all of it. It's really, it's just instant coffee. It's all right, you drink that. Oh, honey, that smells bad. I've smelt it, it smells all right. Look, we've got a moist towelette. It's very moist. Oh, no, no, no. I'd drink the coffee. I don't mind Well, you coffee. would do in the middle of a battle, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's very moist. You know, I, I have to say... That it smells the, nice. The quality of this is this was really, This must really be what um, fresh army men smell like. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing in here which feels bad quality. No. Which I think is exceptional. And, you know, I'm really thrilled, actually, at that. Because, you know, the one thing that you want, someone's out there putting their life on the line, you know, they, they should at least have some that good nutrition. That really and heavy. That... I don't know if that... It didn't need salt, that, actually. No, it really didn't need salt at all. But you've got Tabasco, so you could put that on. We haven't tried to be peanut butter, but I imagine that's just peanut butter. It's just going to be soft peanut butter, isn't yeah. it? So, I mean, there's not... And I'm sure it tastes... Need package before opening. Well, I definitely need it. I'm starving. <laughs> oh, they must mean this, mustn't they? Uh, yeah. But really make sure you need it before you eat it. Hot beverage bag. What's this? That's for making your coffee. Oh, wow. Open beverage bag. Fill with water. Add the beverage powder. Remove the air. Activate. FR Place the beverage bag in FRH as you would an MRE entree. That's this. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, it's because they wouldn't obviously have hot water. No. Right. So they're heating up their coffee, right. which is great. I mean, how great is that? Yeah, they can have no a hot fire. drink. I mean, that's brilliant, isn't no it? No fire at any point. As, you it know, could be somewhere freezing cold, yeah. and you can have a hot meal hot and drink, a hot drink. Hot meal, job and done. that means the world, I think, when you must be in that kind of situation. Absolutely, it does. Yeah. We need to give it a score out of 10. Well, it's, I think it's fabulous, really. I mean, I know that... I imagine people who have got to eat this go, oh... We have to approach this, I think, but, in a different way to anything else yeah, that we've tried on Down yeah. the World Food Art. This comes in a category I mean, all of its own. Does it serve the purpose it's designed for? Absolutely, it serves the purpose. Does I it would serve say. the purpose? Do, is it is it quite exciting? It's it's exciting to us, and we're sat in a house. It's totally edible. It's completely edible, isn't it? It's not unpleasant at all. That main course was really nice. The pudding was really nice. Crackers, are, uh, nuts and seeds, really nuts nice. and raisins and things. Fine. Lovely biscuits, really nice. Peanut butter to give me a bit of energy. I quite like the coffee. Coffee's pretty awful, but it's that's because right. I'm a coffee snob. Oh, I'd and I wouldn't, drink a coffee, should I? And I wouldn't go anywhere near 
that drink because it, it no it, that was the worst bit actually that that was the worst bit definitely but that's where you're trying to dry dairy isn't yeah. it that's yeah. maybe where that's gone wrong so there is a smell to yes this, this. It, it I can, wonder what that smell is it can only be one score it's got to be 10 yes. isn't it it's got to be 10 you know? my expectations were zero I was expecting tasteless horrible food the only thing that was a bit I'm gonna weird keep was the drinks. I'm keeping the chewing gum as a memento so, you know, and the mattress and the spoon. What an amazing and exciting thing, you know, to see inside mm. of and, and to try. It's and fascinating. It because, is. Because, you know, I would have had no idea what they ate and... I thought out of there was just going to cut... I thought it was just going to be penne with... So did I. I had no I idea expect... it would be... How many courses is there? There is a whole spread across this table. <laughs> so Brilliant. for the uh, American... Army, yeah. MRE, Russians, 10 out of 10. Yes, absolutely. And if we try any other army, um, <laughs> then, you know, we, yeah. will, we will gaze them. Please yeah. do feel free. If, if, you, if you have army uh, rations available touch. to you, there's will, another country. I will try them. Please send them. That would be them. great. Thank you so much uh, for sending it. You know, the, what, what a brilliant thing to, to send and what a lovely surprise. Yeah, An additional really little present. Yeah. 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 So, it's time for... End the end of bits. So never, never going to knit you up, Cal. Is still ongoing, yes. Yes. Uh, that finishes on. End of February. So there's loads of time. Loads Get of time. Knitting. Get and knitting. I've, I've just got the prizes for that. Cool. And I just thought I'd show you. So the first prize is actually a pattern that's been donated by um, lovely Madeline, Madeline Windsor, who designs under Kingfisher Knits. And she's got a new pattern that should be coming out soon, I think, if it's not out already. And it's called the Midnight Sherbet Wrap. What a fantastic name. And it's brioche. Oh. It's a full brioche shawl. It's beautiful. You know, if you love brioche, you will love, love the shawl. So we've got that as a prize. And then I've just got some yarn as well. I've got two other prizes. Both of these I purchased, one very recently, one about a year ago. The first one is a skein of yarn from the Knitting Swede and this is in the Mini Rainbow Carbon colourway and it's a really nice blend. It's 60% Exmoor Blueface, 20% Alpaca, 20% Silk, 400 metres and I think it's stripes but I'm not entirely certain. So that's the first one. And then the other prize is a skein of the Mondim yarn, the Portuguese yarn that I've seen. That would be of, exciting for people yeah, to try. Yeah, on a lot of different yeah. podcasts. And the colour is 201. So it's this lovely sort of pinky with all different flecks in. So that's the other prize. So we've got three prizes for the Never Gonna Knit You Up. Can we so mentioned that's... at the start of the show the Climb Every Mountain. Remember... If you are a runner or a walker, get in touch and we'll get you involved with that. That's on the go right now. We showed you the graphic earlier on as to where we're at. Let's see if we can get up Everest and let's see if we can beat those knitters. Remember, it's Team Cool and it's Team Fines. What else have you got? Just the very last thing. I bought one thing and I saw on Amy's podcast, Stranded Dye Works, she just knit on her knitting machine a pair of socks and I just loved the yarn. So I hunted it down. It was Grundle Hot Socks and it's colourway number 417. And I found, I had to really search for this. It was really difficult to find. It's a self-striping in these lovely colours. And if you watched Amy's podcast, you will have seen these. Really, really lovely really cheap yarn and I found it in this shop online you and ply that's got to be a play on hue and cry we think hasn't Absolutely. it they've got to be fans yeah and it's a lovely shop based in Shrewsbury yeah. Shrewsbury how do you say that not sure so I've got that online brilliant service and they sent me a little opal mini ball oh, with it as well always nice so that's really so really good so if you're looking for some of this then i would recommend you try you and ply cool is that you done and that's me done cool so we will see you in two weeks for episode 93 it's the very last baker bears bucket list where we'll be picking something off the list to do this year but also as well it sees the return of what's on your bookshelf wow. kay wrote at length about her quest for finding um, a lovely book because she's really struggling to find something that's hooking her. So we thought we would bring back what's on your bookshelf for a one-off special where I'll be talking about, because I've read loads since the last time we did this. It's a long time since we did this. So it's going to be really interesting for me to talk about some of the things I've read and enjoyed, but for you to call out, to 
help. I know. Please I don't know help what's people. going on at the moment. I'm really struggling to read anything. But we'll 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 cover that at length in the next episode. Uh, the Pippi Mitts tutorial is obviously we're right in the midst of it. There'll be the next episode on Tuesday. Our quest for the perfect cup of tea, patrons. If you saw the Patreon podcast on Sunday, our quest for the perfect cup of tea started yesterday. Yep. So head over and watch that if you haven't seen it already. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks, everybody. It's been momentous what with this it? complete spread of rather amazing food and lots We're of cool bucket list activities and so many new castles. How many new castles did you have? Was it three? Two, I think. So that's five new castles with my three. Mm, that's that's focus, good isn't it? going. We need to finish some stuff. Just what we need at the start of the year. I like yeah. it. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks for more. Is it sitting Not quitting, and in case the bigger repairs, they'll take you to fabulous places of which their favorites they'll share. You better buy a pad and get yourself a bigger repair. You'll find yourself in a castle while watching the bigger repairs. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bigger repairs. On your shelf for once in your oven Or maybe a show you'll want to wear So sit yourself right down And watch down in cable